Hey, what's up everybody? It's Corey here from Armchair Rockstar. Good to be back on a beautiful Sunday morning out cruising around while the traffic's low. Just enjoying a pretty day. Went to vacuum out the truck and do some stuff like that. Thought, And I ran across a story, actually, is what happened. And this story sparked the idea that maybe I should shoot a quick video. I was reading stories on ultimateclassicrock.com about Janie Lane and his many struggles both as a, as a man, a musician, and uh, all of the things he faced and things he tried to overcome and eventually uh, failed. You know, Janie Lane was a front man of Warrant for, for many years. Uh, they were at the forefront not at the forefront, maybe, of, head, of hair, I hate saying hair metal, but I don't know another way to explain it, because um, metal's so compartmentalized these days. Um, but he was so, uh, he was a talented songwriter. You know, shit, they were on top of the charts with the first album, Dirty Rotten, Filthy Stinkin' Rich, with Down Boys, 32 Pennies, uh, Sometimes She Cries, Heaven. I mean, the whole damn album was just phenomenal for its time and still today in my opinion but uh Janie died let's see 10 years ago August 11th and today is so that would have been what last Wednesday so we're, we're about a week out from the 10th anniversary of Janie Lane's death uh, in the end uh, alcohol was what took him uh, as it does many guys you know, they were a big party band back in the 80, late 80s, early 90s. And um, Janie was one of the unlucky ones who just never managed to fully get past it, is the truth. So, you know, it just is what it is. Sometimes that happens to fellas. But think about the impact that he had on music and the impact that he might not have, might have had on music even later had the alcohol not become the growing issue that it was. And, as well as depression. Those often go hand in hand. Uh, I'm, I'm well versed, as I'm sure many of you are as well. Uh, sometimes that that bubbly front man you see who's always out doing all the talking isn't maybe doing as well as you think. So, so check on your people. But when I go back and I really picture Warrant, I saw him with Janie, I think, five times over the years. I saw him with I want to say Poison, I saw him with, uh, oh god, Trickster, Firehouse, I saw him with, man, who else was there? There were others. Seems like there was a Poison show. I can't remember who else they might have opened for or, or headlined with, but I saw him several times on Cherry Pie Tour as a young man, and uh, that show just blew my mind, because it, it was great music, but it was also fun. These guys weren't out there working. They were out there just having a blast or putting on a hell of a face that looked like they were, one or the other. Uh, but to think of the many guys that we've lost over the years and gals, we've lost plenty of women too, um, is is humbling and, and so disappointing because you're always left with this idea of what else could they have done? Uh, especially when they weren't that old. I want to say Janie was in his 40s, which is, as a guy in his 40s, way too damn young to die. Uh, at least that's my opinion. And, you know, another interesting thing that always kind of plagued him, I was told, was that Janie supposedly hated cherry pie. Because uh, he did not want to do this poppy radio music that was all about fun and sex. Janie was actually, from all I've read at least, a, a pretty serious individual uh, who took his music very seriously and had a lot of pride in songs like Uncle Tom's Cabin and things like that that were more intellectual and frankly a little more musically difficult. So uh, it was always curious to see that. I mean, at the time, we didn't hear Janie Lane hates Cherry Pie, because at the time, Janie Lane was probably getting laid a lot and having all of the fun 
So, I mean, at that time, it was treating him pretty good. And I imagine it still continues to treat him, treat him pretty good long before he, uh, before he left. But, um, I can imagine that the cross between doing what you have to do to keep your record deal and doing what you want to do to scratch your own personal creativity are very different things. And I'm sure with him that is absolutely no different, uh, that he needed that, that outlet. And then came Dog Eat Dog. Uh, Dog Eat Dog met zero critical success hardly. Uh, not many people liked it, not many people bought it. But the fact is, in my opinion, some of Warren's greatest music ever came out on that song, that album. Uh, We'll start with Machine Gun, you know, which was the lead single, I believe, at the time. And uh, it's a great song. It's intense. It's fast. It felt like Warrant. Uh, maybe a little more... I mean, it was still about sex, but it was a little more... It felt a little darker. Uh, but for me... I mean, Hole in the Wall's a good one. I want to say Southern Comfort was on there. I may be wrong. But my favorite song from Warrant on Dog Eat Dog or, frankly, on any album was the bitter pill. Uh, it's sort of like almost an ode to Bohemian Rhapsody. It's it's a song with parts, it's a song with harmonies, it's a song with additional instruments. Everything about it is special by comparison to your typical run-of-the-mill warrant song. Uh, the lyrics are, are fantastic. I encourage you, seriously, stop. Take a pause right now. I'll wait. We'll, go, we'll get some pictures of dogs or something. Go find the bitter pill. Listen to it. Come back. I'll be here. All right. So I hope you found it. Hope you liked it. Hope you didn't just humor me and watch the whatever stupid video we slid in here. Uh, but uh, I hope you dug it and found a side of warrants that you didn't know existed back then. And the truth of the matter is they continue to put out quite a lot of music. Um, they re-recorded all of their hits at one point after a dispute with a record label. Uh, so if you see Warrant's latest and greatest, I want to say that's all re-recorded, which is kind of different. You don't see that too often. Uh, but I think they're all good. It's, it's, uh, it's a little more raw. It's way less polished. It's, truthfully, it's just good music. Uh, it really is, and, uh, and I hope you'll check it out. Now, a lot of the other later music I am less familiar with. I know they put out, I want to say, after Dog Eat Dog, we went to Ultraphobic, and then Belly to Belly, and they've put out a lot of stuff since then, and, and I understand I have a new singer now, um, that I need to do the new justice and go check out, because he might be very good. Uh, I just have a hard time accepting that it's not Jamie, if that makes sense. So, but what we'll do is just kind of float through all of it sometime. You know, it's still out there. It's still good. To me, it's new warrant music. Why would I not check it out? What I hope this video does for you is uh, remind you kind of what a good band they were back in the day. And get you to dust off some old albums. Download and make a new playlist on iTunes, on Apple or whatever. It's what I did. I hope you'll relax and remember that era and think of how much freaking fun it just was. It was so great. And uh, please, while you're doing it, take a little time. Remember Janie today. I, I know it's a few days after, but still. Uh, this is a guy who wrote a lot of beautiful music that really impacted my childhood and probably some of your youth as well. So... I now have a new helper lending me some lending me his expertise with production and getting videos ready, doing the editing, things like that. So my hope is that over the next couple months we'll be able to rebuild this channel, get it over its uh, monetization limits. I'm I'm there on everything except subscriptions, and I still need about four hundred. Uh, I would love to by the end of the year be able to have the channel monetized where it could at least fund itself so that I could put more time into putting out more cool stuff and uh, chatting with you guys. I mean, the truth is I hope we can have a way somewhere along the way where this can be more interactive. Uh, I'm not yet eligible for live feeds, so once that comes, hopefully we can 
once a week do a live feed and just chat back and forth, see what's happening, and uh, get to know each other a little better. But please like, subscribe. Thanks for everything, and we'll see you back here in a few days. Thanks for watching.